guys. So, Fahim Ahmed, I started my business way back in 97, beyond 2000 technology, 2000 as in the Y2K problem. I don't know, most of you might not have heard of Y2K. So, that is the Y in the BYT, beyond 2000 technologies. So, I've been into technology and digital marketing, digital marketing about um, 12 years now. We became, uh, in 2009 or 10, we became one of the first companies in India to become uh, social media advertisers. There's a brand, apparel brand called Basics Life. I definitely want you all to take a look at it, especially the folks in marketing. The reason I say that is uh, the founders of the company probably know about 70% of digital marketing that I know, which is pretty phenomenal. They have about 1.5 million people on their Facebook page, about 225,000 people on Instagram, so on and so forth. We've been their agency for about 11 years. So my background is engineering in computer science. I'm a certified project management professional, MBA in marketing, and mostly I've learned everything that I know, not from college, sorry teachers, but the hard school of Knox, just like most of us. And uh, so after that, we've gone on to work with uh, multiple different uh, clients, um, you know, from, from Harman Kardon, Hamley's Toy Stores, a digital strategy was done by us. We worked with Ghana.com, um, Zigbee's. I don't know if you guys remember this uh, uh, automotive portal called Zigbee's. We've done work for them. So plenty of uh, work inside of India and outside of India. Uh, I'm well recognized uh, for uh, a customer acquisition through ads, paid ads, apart from the social media activities. About a year and a half back, I started an initiated with initiative with eight other digital marketers. Uh, we are called as a Digital Masters Alliance. Take a look at it. Um, so on April 12th, we conducted a fundraising event of a Digital Masters conference. About We did it for about six hours, nine of us, and we raised about uh, six lakhs for the PM Cares Fund. Uh, we had about 3,000 people on the Zoom webinar, and at one time, there were about 2,850 people. That probably was the biggest digital marketing conference till now. So please uh, follow me on Instagram. My handle is Fahim SA. And uh, very soon, we'll be announcing something. We want to attempt a 5,000 people conference, and hopefully in the future, we want to attempt a, even a 10,000 people conference. So I would love for you to ask me questions because uh, you know there's only so much um, uh, the host will be able to ask. Would love to take all your questions. I'm sure the rest of the panelists also would agree. I look forward to being on this uh, show. Thank you so much, Asai, for having me. Thank you, Fahimsa, for uh, such a great introduction. I, I will like uh, Zareen Mem to introduce herself. Yes, Zareen. All right. Uh, so my name is Zareen Barda. Uh, welcome. I thank you all for joining this session today. So a bit about my background is I was actually born and raised in Canada. So my technical background is I'm an auto mechanical engineer um, by education as well as by profession. So I did that for about 15 years. Um, and then I've kind of moved over into the branding, the marketing um, for my own personal brands. So that's either Zareen Barda as well as my brand for healing oilistic. And that has definitely been, again, like self-learned. Um, through self-education, as well as online classes, as well as there's so many new podcasts, other tools and stuff that are also available for free for you guys to also learn and educate yourselves. Um, so that's kind of where my background is, is it's the technical side from engineering, as well as hands-on health and wellness, yoga, um, essential oils, overall lifestyle. Um, and go ahead and take a look at my Instagram. It is at Zareen Barda, as well as Healing Oilistic. So go ahead and like it there. And I hope you guys learn a lot through this panel. Great. Thanks a lot. I will like now uh, Rajiv Bhai to introduce himself. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, people. I'm Rajiv Patel. Uh, it's been 20 years, more than 20 years working with media uh, in India. So I work, started my journey with Indian Express as a journalist for two and a half years, then worked with Archduck for five years. And I was a Gujarat correspondent. I was on screen handling all the events which was happening in India. Uh, did it for five years, then shifted to radio, uh, joined Reliance. That's a big FM. I launched their uh, Baroda and Surat station. And uh, after working with them for 16 months, I moved to uh, Radio City, where I'm working currently, and uh, joined as a manager, then move up to the uh, hierarchical ladder. And right now, I'm a vice president programming for Radio City, handling programming and digital work. Mainly programming, if I, in a nutshell, uh, uh, elaborate about programming part, the idea is about creative 
space of radio what type of music will play when the the, the day part will play what jocks will take up as a topic what creatives will play alongside the music and jock jock talk this is basically my my uh, work functioning and since past 5 years i'm also handling the digital part also so <clears throat> in nutshell it's 20 years working with media different parts of media starting with print audio visual then to uh, uh, radio and now digital as well and also doing my freelance work you can access me on my digital uh, space which is instagram on instagram you can access me on r w a g i v rajiv patel you can find me there and i am also on twitter or on facebook as well uh, that's about it from my side thanks a lot uh, so we have a lovely uh, uh, panel today and uh, let me uh, first ask uh, everybody uh, so if you all are having any questions so it is only going to be a q and a session uh, so to the audience if you have any questions you can post them in the q and a section that we have so we will be taking that up so before we take that up uh, let me uh, first uh, ask my questions because that will be there of a lot i have a lot of questions so what was uh, so th the question is for each one of you so what was your first experience with the digital thing that you felt Uh, so suppose when i used instagram for the first time i knew that okay this is the thing which is going to change things up for me facebook was not uh, the, the thing which uh, insisted me to do a lot of things on digital platform but for me facebook uh, instagram was there so what according to you whenever you touched upon a technology uh, and then you felt that okay this one is, uh, by this you understood okay digital era is starting and digital things are going to there so let us start with i think uh, who can go up first let's have the The lady first, Zareen. Yeah. All right. Um. So I guess like for myself, probably it was probably MySpace, um, which is probably the first thing that I used. I was probably like late because I know my girlfriends and stuff were on board with Friendster and like using other platforms. But for myself, I would probably say it was more MySpace, which took me outside of, I guess, the comfort zone or outside of the bubble. so that way you're experiencing people internationally you're getting outside of your local zones and that was probably my first experience of actually seeing what impact and how you can influence others outside of like your local community that was probably my first experience okay yeah bye bye uh yeah so i don't know if you've heard of this platform called rise r y z e it used to be a professional networking platform like linkedin and uh, that was uh, one of my first experiences with how we can actually connect with, with uh, a lot of people and i think we, that is probably about 15 plus years old and uh, i was just looking at the founder's name today it's uh, kind of, it's important to remember the founder's name back then nobody cared right yeah. so that that was my experience and uh 15 years on i still am in touch with many people from different parts of the world because of that network now of course they connected with me on instagram linkedin and facebook and all of those things so that that was my uh, moment but uh, as far as digital marketing is concerned even much before that you know i've seen the dot com uh, boom as well as the dot com yeah. bust of the 2000s so yeah okay rajiv bhai your first experience uh i would say my first experience i'm basically i'm into mass communication it's my my entire profile is around 20 yeah. years work with media so wherever i'm interacting with people and the biggest challenge uh, amongst ourselves when when we entered into facebook world when there was around 2007 8 time you know that facebook gave me an opportunity to talk to my listeners so like if radio show is on and there are there are the, the the telos machine which we call a response machine which is like buzzing and all the lines are buzzing but practically only rj can speak to one or two people or three people at the max and the rest of the people their interaction is goes off that that hindrance or that 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 challenge is been wiped off in this digital medium where everyone each and every one can interact with rj and they have their own space of interaction so that was the biggest thing i would say uh, uh, that, that there was one important point which triggered me to hook on to a digital media okay so uh, next question is uh, so during this lockdown most of your uh, uh, your work has been stuck 
and uh, i think fahim bhai you have a very big team rajiv bhai is handling i think around seven or eight stations uh, under him and uh, so how uh, zain ma'am uh, how are you all motivating your team and how has your work changed because in the digital era there are a lot of things so i know about rajiv bhai a lot of rjs are working from home so they are uh, tuning to their radio from home and then they are working so how was the whole experience around it so let us so, start with zain ma'am yeah personally so I've been in India for 10 years now um and I had handled Asia Pacific operations for the 10 years. So even before the quarantine took effect, I was working from home uh and I would basically just travel out to plants or travel out to different countries on an as needed basis. So for me, I guess it's impacted me in the sense where um now all of my other teammates are also in quarantine, so having them have that same discipline of Okay, you have to get up. You have to make sure your schedule is set. You have to make sure you're still getting those day-to-day -day tasks done and that you're still motivated. That is probably the biggest thing is because they're used to working in a environment of having all their peers around them whereas now what we'll try to do is we'll do other um non-work related motivation techniques. So maybe once a week or once every couple weeks we'll do like basically like a team party or something where it'll basically be something outside of work like where we'll do like a zoom bingo or something that motivates them to kind of keep them on task when they're at work because usually when they're in the workplace themselves they have that ability to go out and socialize and go to like yeah. someone else's desk and say hi hello and have like those water cooler chats and stuff whereas with this they don't always have that same opportunity because every time they're logging in onto their computers they're saying okay i need to get this work done or i need to get that work done whereas having something a designated time associated for them to be able to basically just do non-work related stuff and still kind of collaborate with the team is something that we're working towards and kind of implementing um on a regular basis and it kind of just depends because now everyone um that wasn't used to working at home is also doing all the other tasks so trying to make sure that they're also dedicating some time whether it's 30 minutes or whether it's an hour um that they're dedicating that time so that they also get something out for themselves very nice fahim bhai what about you yeah so how to overcome a webinar withdrawal symptoms after the lockdown So I'm going to do a talk show in the next couple of weeks. Uh, probably in a month. <laughs> I'm actually going to get a psychologist and a nutritionist, and the show is going to be called Health and Happiness. I have a show called the FAS Pass. So uh, you'll be happy to know, uh, all of you that work for uh, bosses, that till date I have not had even one Zoom webinar meeting. Although I am at least in uh, Zoom webinars at least uh, probably twice a day. Uh, having said that, the thing I think. literally people are struggling with their lives they're all trying to stay alive right literally we're trying to stay alive so i i'm trying to avoid adding any more pressure on uh, them in terms of productivity uh, or a show for meetings so on and so forth so in fact what i've told the team is hey guys work from 7 a.m. in the morning till 9 p.m. just see if you can clock your hours i've not yet given the direction i'm going to give those directions now for me saying that hey i want you to work like 5 hours 6 hours till we are back in action so that is one so we are not doing any kind of so i'm i'm a big believer in all of these things the health happiness motivation all that but right now i think people know what they're doing so i'm just letting them be uh, however having said that from may onwards i'm going to bring about some loose uh, guidelines in terms of how people should work between what hours they should be working uh, so on and so forth and uh, so far you know we we've, we've been doing all right i mean pretty much everybody is uh, doing all right and also what i did was we, i have some clients uh, i have a client in italy and i was seeing what was happening to them in central italy uh, from north italy to how it moved to central and south yeah. and uh, we actually locked down about 5 6 days back our office and also over the years uh, i've been very encouraging of people working from home so we have like moms we have uh, people coming from far off places so we just tell them I know just work from home because uh, digital is something that you can do from home as long as there is trust in terms of uh, productivity, work ethics, and all of those things. So yeah, that's that's me. Okay, Rajiv. I, I would I would I would say this answer in two ways. You know, one is that internal customers where where we are dealing with, which is my RJs, my producers, my sound engineers, 
and everyone used to work together under one roof that idea is coming so we are nurturing that idea together and we are making it a big spike out of it that is a as a way of working while we were the pre covid situation after this covid situation we all are locked down the, the things are everyone is working alone so everyone is having some idea some discussions to happen and some communication has to go on so say for example every 12 hours there is a list which is coming out and saying that these many people are uh, corona positive now now this many treatments are there or there are authorities who are making some statements we have to put it some everything on air you know and here we have to be on our toes all the time so like every half an hour every hour the things are changing outside the world and it, it needs to be communicated well and we have to sensitize people about the situation which is out there you know so that that there is a there is a lot many things that constant interaction has to be there and again that that quotient of working alone and we used to work as a team together so that virtual space has to be there where we are giving that uh, atmosphere where we are working together only so the only tool which is working within internal team is appreciation so if somebody has did something good some good collaboration has been happened and something good is being done so it has to be appreciated well because it's a it's a day in day out and it's like every every hour work which is going on and we have to appreciate the things to get things better 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 it's not something like that that's a one part of my my work profile and second part is the clients you everybody knows that you know advertisement is the only source of revenue for a station and everyone knows that uh, when bad time comes everyone cuts cut down the marketing budget so we have to fight another battle there where where we have to keep keep that faith on the medium has to be alive for the clients so that's another battle which is going on so that's a two way thing which is lockdown has taught us okay so uh, most of the things that we see uh, in now uh, what are your thoughts on how digital will be uh, taken after the covid and before covid so there was a share of voice in all the advertisement budget that is for sure in the bigger companies it was there that people were spending a few uh, so there was a percentage of digital so it is going to increase but by what magnitude and uh, will there be a change in shift of the psychology of the people in the higher management because sometimes what used to happen when we used to uh, as a company pitch to the companies it was always that higher management did not believe in uh, the roi that digital was going to give them so the num- uh, amount of money which is going to spend on digital and then they don't know how to track those things so they were like if billboard is there or paper ad is there then we know on the same day we will be getting something else. digital is a, still a bit longer game it is a reputation management kind of thing and those so how uh, do you all believe that post covid will the scenario change uh, as people are at home they are consuming a lot of content and there is a change in pattern but will the psychology at the top management change that is the question who will like to take that up okay fine bhai can you yeah sure yeah um because we are a primarily a digital uh, marketing agency and a technology company we have been uh, successfully able to convince most of our clients uh, towards a digital having said that most of our clients are small and medium sized uh, companies okay uh, but within that so so we have large clients but then they continue to do some of the traditional uh, you know advertising models and all those things but a good outlier an example would be this brand called basics um i remember in 2014 2015 i got a call from uh, the owner of the company and he said hey fine you know what i have only about 15 lakhs to invest and we cannot afford the newspaper ads uh, do you think we should just invest in uh, facebook advertising and this is to drive people into the stores like bottles yeah so we experimented that long story short every year we saw a growth so we uh, did only facebook uh, today we do facebook and instagram and uh, sms that's about it we don't do any newspaper ads these are extremely popular uh, sales that happen and earlier they used to spend few crores in advertising now we are talking about lakhs probably crore compared to 4 5 crores or so on so forth so and i strongly believe so we have seen we have seen this trend for a very very long time uh, for our business and our clients i see a big shift uh, happening 
uh, I won't say big shift, I would say like a considerable shift happening, not just in terms of digital marketing, but in terms of digital transformation itself, in terms of how people are going to work. So Corona is going to, COVID is, going to, uh, is here to stay for at least 18 months, 24 months, social distancing, so on and so forth, one yeah. to person other people. So not just uh, digital marketing and the budgets, but I also think uh, uh, digital transformation itself is going to be considerable uh, in the next two years. So if you do something for like that long, 18 months, 24 months, I strongly believe the businesses can stand to change forever. Is uh, my opinion. Okay. Yeah. When when, a couple of things yeah. to add. Um, so as yeah. Fahim had mentioned, it's like the budget reduced drastically for what they were investing into these digital ads. So that's that would probably be like the recommendation is for some of these companies that are hesitant is allocate even 10% of their print budget or for their traditional budget into digital marketing. Give it a fixed time frame, either six months or a one year period and kind of see what that turnaround is so that their ROI is able to be actually seen so that they have the data and the quantifiable numbers to back it up as well so that they're able to see that, okay, is it worthwhile us to then maybe do it as 25% and 75% um, so that way they can restructure their marketing budget so that they don't have to add on additional budget, they can reduce some of their traditional marketing budget and use that directly towards some of the digital portion. Okay. Rajiv, will you like to add some point in this? I think he's muted. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. I, I was muted. So uh, I have a little bit of difference of opinion here. You know, yeah, what is happening uh, in, in media, wherever I have worked, you know, uh digital has already started taking a pie uh, taking their own pie you know the pie share is already there so digital is already having that since i'll give you a very small example of elections which were the last parliamentary election which had happened you know everybody was waiting that that parties will open up their budgets and later on they opened up their budgets but there most of this chunk went into digital space and which really was a big dent to traditional mediums. So what a point I'm here making here is that people are already taking digital as serious, serious medium of advertisement. They are, they are taking it very seriously, the social media and other, other media tools. So digital tools. Now, after this COVID situation, that faith will increase multifolds. And I'm sure people are going to advertise it more and they are going to experiment with technologies. So say, for example, Zoom, what we are webinar is happening over a Zoom right now. I think very, very few of the people were knowing about Zoom before COVID, you know, this lockdown situation, this lockdown situation has opened up this technology as well to, to the masses. Similarly, there are many, many technological advance, advantages they'll, they'll be using and they'll be using through digital only. Uh, a, a small example of radio industry right now operating from home. RJs are doing show from home. So there is a software called Radio City, uh, Radio Computing Software, RCS. More than 90% of world over radio stations are operating on that software. That software is already having a version Zeta Go, which was never been experimented. Because of this compulsion of lockdown situation, that tool has been experimented and it is doing wonderfully well. So right now we are at a situation we are open for experiments to get good results. And if they'll be getting a good result, they are going to put money all also on it. So this is my point of view here on this side. Okay, we just lost you on the last part, but uh, what he was trying to say is uh, people are going to put money on a uh, digital, that is for sure. And the things are uh, changing. There was a software that uh, radio was using for a longer time. It also had a digital way of doing the thing, but they never utilized that thing. Uh, but due to the situation, they were able to do and smoothly transition. So there are some technologies already available. So that is the question, which uh, is my next one. So there are a lot of softwares which uh, used to increase productivity. So suppose teams were using communicate uh, Slack for communication. So there are uh, like Zira is there for task management and those kind of things. So those were the softwares which were used, but uh, traditional media and uh, traditional people never used to use those. So suppose if we take example of Khata book, 
and uh, those apps coming on board and then uh, doing a lot of things so uh, do you think that uh, with the time that we are in so quarantine time and because everybody has to do this, suppose yesterday my father used zoom for the first time okay so he is not a tech savvy at all he uses his phone he uses the phone only for calling and now he is because he is at home he is use, uses it for whatsapp also but now he is using technology then he uh, says can i do association meeting on it there are 40 people okay yeah yeah you can do association meeting also okay great i will do my association meeting so there are people who were into traditional a lot and they never uh, used to take digital uh, not just marketing but also tools so will there be a scope for uh, digital tools also now which uh, were not understood a lot by people as now techno they are familiar with technology uh, will that happen so you want to take that yeah sure i think the the scope is there uh, i think it's just they're changing the interfaces that some of the people are experiencing so i think a lot of the tools that already might may have existed they'll probably change the interfaces to make them a lot more user friendly so that way a lot of the 50 60 plus um age group is also able to access them easily um for example like the way they've designed smartphones like 2 year olds 3 year olds are able to use them without having any issue because they're designing them around this age group and stuff right so even as they start with these communications and stuff they'll be making buttons bigger bolder they'll be changing how the interface actually works and interacts so that way people can use them as well as they may then also integrate voice on command so for some of the elderly people that don't want to be typing in things they'll use their voice memos or they'll be able to do a voice recording and say okay i want to do this and that way it connects up to another person or they're able to integrate a call through that so the platforms that are already there and the ones that are going to be created are just going to be a lot more user friendly to enlarge the demographic that they're targeting okay by the way will you like to add something um uh, rajiv you want to take that because i've got a zoom interruption <laughs> <laughs> i think rajiv bhai is having some issues with the camera also so uh, after some time his mobile phone falls off <laughs> Okay, so yeah. I'll I'll take it. Okay, yeah. I think um, Zari put it uh, beautifully. I think there's a real challenge. There's a real danger of people uh, coming out of the workforce, especially people who are not digital savvy. And so I would highly recommend for them to get a coach, maybe their nephew or niece or their son or thing, because I don't think there's any more running away from digital. so all the productivity software i mean we we have to start using all of those things but i i i'm hopeful that people will adapt to it and start using uh, you know the various technologies that are available there there are hundreds of different uh, project management software time tracking so on and so forth and it's uh, if you give it a time and uh, test a bunch of them you will find out what is the one that you need for your organization and even for yourself so i'm hopeful that people will start uh, using that okay so uh, another question is uh, so rajiv bhai is from the outdoor or we call traditional media okay so radio so just now the spend on radio has decreased a lot mostly the spend on all the things have decreased only few companies are spending but that is only for the empathy part that suppose uber is spending just now it is just going to tell people that yeah we have uh, there for you and uh, thank you for not going out and those kind of things so getting the brownie points but as soon as uh, things become normal uh, will we see uh, the traditional media getting the same attention that it was getting or it will be only for the bigger players because now uh, as fine by also said it is going to be there for 18 months and then 50% workforce will only be working most of the people will be working from home i think a lot of people would uh, won't be traveling a lot that much that is for sure in the future uh, days uh, at least for 6 8 months but uh, will the traditional uh, things like billboard or if you say radio or uh, other things like newspaper ads will they get the uh, same share of voice that they were getting around february or january this year or that we, might uh, be the normal there will be a new normal which will be coming for them uh rajiv if your line is uh, good maybe you want to take uh, take it out Yeah. yeah 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 thanks thanks for him i i i was having some trouble with the uh, connection uh just just, just again uh, look there, there there is a definitely a huge scope for digital there is no doubt about it traditional medium will be there 
my only point here is that i i'll, I'll just start with the, what he was talking about that uh, you know that other 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 mediums they are they are taking it seriously digital is been taken seriously so i'll just add up to what he was talking about it i am in total agreement to that and like uh, imagine a stock market earlier stock market used to operate on the share certificates and there was there was there were, there were people were shouting that these yeah. many shares i have bought it this many shares has been sold and pure saude zaban pe hote the that was a real word zaban ki kimat you know at the time if you if if you would have went up to a person and you have said to them that this all things will will, will be vanished and everything will be on computer there will be a computer which will manage all the transactions and yeah. you have to log into a computer to make any transaction i'm sure my grandfather would have been laughed aloud about it and he would have knocked it off the entire thing right now sitting here at this moment give me a single example where a single transaction in a stock market is happening without a demat account everything is online so if you are not ready to change the world will make you bend you know so the adaptability is a key to it so they have already this covid situation has given a chance that you should explore other mediums as well because everything is stand still the digital is working you better explore it now it is up to the requirement of a person <clears throat> so i'm not saying that billboard and everything will be shut radio will be shut print will be shut and everyone will be putting their money on digital only no so now they have given taken another avenue which has been explored to them now they utilize as it is required so like traditional sari pa or a yeah. dulha collection which is like nri collection is big in december and january rajiv bhai uh, we just lost you uh-huh. after the traditional one okay rajiv yeah. so, so yeah. i was saying rajiv sorry rajiv just one second i i suggest you turn off your video so that you are able to conserve uh, bandwidth and yeah. then come on from your audio i think your audio will be lot better yeah please yeah. try this now yeah yeah sir yeah yeah it's better so I, so so i was saying that uh, uh, there is a there is a top, uh, typical nri season for which local merchants are really banking their monies on for the year you know so which is starting from a post diwali till the uttarayan time which is till the february mid that nri season works in this nri season they are coming up with a special dulha collection and everything and to explore and to touch base to that target audience they they leave no stone unturned and they use a print they use radio they use billboards and everything they are already in touch with their uh, uh, customer base through digital throughout the year and they are less spending on the digital front during that season time now after post covid i am thinking i am i am my my assumption is that they will be equally giving weightage to the i think we lost him again okay Rajiv, we are not able to hear you. Uh, let me uh, mute you once, and then uh, maybe we'll get another panel member to speak, and then we will uh, get back to you. Yeah. So, uh, Fahim, by our uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry. So, I guess yeah. um, a couple points regarding the outdoor advertisements and the outdoor space. I think within like six months to a year, I guess once people start getting out of their homes, the outdoor space is going to be big because. people have been locked in their homes and isolated for so long that they're not going to be wanting to consume as much digital media they're going to be wanting to go outdoors they're going to be wanting to experience mother nature so they're going to be exposed to all of those so i think there's going to be a balance where people are going to be having to decide how much do i want to be putting into the outdoor space versus the digital space um and i think it will be a fine balance that each um company will need to find within themselves as to kind of see what has worked in the past for them when it comes to the outdoor space and even people that may not have ever done any outdoors 
marketing, they may then take that on because I think a lot of more people are going to be outdoors more once the social distancing and even with social distancing, once they're starting to get out of their homes, I think it is going to pick up definitely. Okay. Uh, so I'll, almost everybody here is an adult, right? Uh, sorry, everybody here is? Is an adult. Yeah. Right, okay, 18 plus, right? So I can swear a little bit if I have to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You have your thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know whether the participants are alive or dead. So let's ask them. Hey, guys, um, will people uh, buy cars? I mean, do you think car sales will pick up after COVID? Can you give me a yes or no in the chat? Yeah. Thank you for doing that because uh, I think this is the first session that we have done at 2 o'clock in post lunch and the audience <laughs> is not responding. Yes, after some time, yes, yeah. no, okay. no, a bunch Maybe. of no's, yes. Okay, so all right. I like no. So I, I, I think about a couple of weeks back, I did a show, guys, and I had an automotive dealer, uh, fashion brands, so on and so forth. So, uh, so here's my thing, right? A, a completely different take on this. I mean, uh, with social distancing, I think uh, uh, people are going to buy more cars. Anybody who was on the edge will end up buying cars, uh, also used cars. I think uh, cap sharing can come down because of this social distancing problem. And uh, having said that, uh, the reason why I gave you that prelude about cars and advertising is because uh, where do people listen to radio? In their cars, right? So radio could just pick up, right? Radio could just pick up. Now, uh, I want to give you an analogy um, about after 2008, eight nine. I was talking to a friend of mine in a large, in the top three top four IT company in, in India. And he was saying, uh, our uh, hourly rates have dropped. And usually when the rates drop, well, once people taste that uh, drop in price, rarely does it go back up to where it was normal, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I see that uh, going to happen in this uh, space too. The, the pressure on margins, the pressure on profitability is going to be so high people are going to definitely cut budgets. There's no question about that. The first thing that gets cut are marketing budgets. Marketing budget. Now, to give you an example, um, in terms of last example, is an already depressed industry is real estate. They have been, been through multiple, multiple challenges. And today we have uh, quite a few uh, real estate clients. And the reason why they love us is because we are able to sell their apartments. Now, so what their strategy currently is when they launch a project, they do a bunch of uh, paper ads, they do some bit of radio, some bit of TV, and boom, they completely stop after that. And after that, digital takes over with a lot less budgets, but more effective. So budgets are going to come down. There's no doubt about that. And, and I think some uh, industries like radio might just even be able to take off is what I uh, feel. That's, that's my thing. I mean, everybody's predicting some shit or the other. I thought on your show, I'll predict something. <laughs> I think real estate will also be going up because everyone's going to want a bigger house, more space to be uh, stuck in. The can, I, can, I have a recording of, can I have a recording of this, Sahil? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> So uh, other thing which I think, uh, just to add my two cents is, uh, people might be moving to back to their two, uh, two tier three city homes, which was there. So because if you see just now, uh, the metro cities or the uh, uh, tier one cities are the ones who are most affected because they're densely populated. And if you go to some other remote locations, they are not, uh, so they have connectivity now, they have everything in place. And most of the people are going to work from home in the future. And that is the trend now. So I think uh, people who were working in Bangalore, Hyderabad, maybe Chennai might try to move to their villages or their towns so that they will always have luxury of big homes that is there. Real estate will be very uh, cheap there. Plus also they can live peacefully. So suppose I was living in Vijayawada, I was living in the outskirts. So I was having a mountain view uh, while I used to wake up. But I do not get that in Ahmedabad. I only see concrete, concrete, concrete. If I want to see something which is green enough, I have to go at least 30 kilometers away from Ahmedabad. In the Absolutely. Naman Gupta is making a great point. He's saying as more and more people move to two and, uh, tier 2 and tier 3, digital can pick up. Uh, yes and no. Uh, some of the traditional mediums uh, do quite well already in the tier 2, yes, tier 3 yes, cities yes, and they're not expensive. But for sure, digital penetration is growing and I think uh, it will continue to grow. I think tier yeah. 2, tier tier three brands can actually stand to benefit quite a bit because of all of this. Very so, good. Uh, 
So, uh, Sahib, you want to be mindful of the time. Uh, we yeah. are 45 minutes in, and you so definitely let, want to take on a bunch of uh, questions. Questions from the user. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I uh, keep my talking less. <laughs> no issue. So uh, we don't have a lot of questions from people, but just because I think they were thinking that I am asking questions. People can drop their questions in the uh, question and answer segment. Uh, it will be great. The first question that Hitesh Kumar is asking is, how should organizations combine traditional and digital marketing in the coming days? Uh, that is for sure. So uh, I think Hitesh, uh, are you there? We will get you in. So if it can be according to some specific example that he is trying to say, it will be better. For a specific one. Hitesh, are you able to hear us? Hello? Yeah, Hitesh. You can go ahead with your question. Yeah, basically, uh, I'm talking about traditional marketing. The real estate industry totally was focused on traditional marketing earlier. Now, we are technology coming in and that's kind of a various technology being the future. So, how that will be going forward, the change in the digital marketing or an traditional marketing view. I think if the question is from real estate, I think Fahim Bhai can answer it uh, very uh, well. Uh, Hitesh ji, what's your background? Uh, do you work for a real estate company? Do you own a real estate company? Basically, I'm an advisor for the real estate company. Okay, great. So, I'm, I'm not sure um, you know, uh, what y your company is currently doing. Uh, almost all of our companies and not just all, all of our clients and many of uh, my uh, digital agency peers, other agency owners, uh, I think uh, almost 75-80% of the budget today is on digital because it's extremely effective for uh, real estate. And so already the shift has happened even before this. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate. They have been go going through a crisis for several years now. So they have been able to adapt to the most cost effective channel to generate leads and sales, so on and so forth. So I would say that thing has already happened. So for your organization, if, if they have not yet done it, I would say uh, dive head first and uh, embrace digital because it will definitely make a big difference in terms of actually selling those apartments. Okay, great. So we have uh, another question. Uh, what can be other options uh, to social media marketing? Hitesh uh, is again asking that question. Hitesh, can you be a bit more specific about the example that you want to hear about? Because option about social media marketing it will always depend on the kind of product that we are dealing with. So so I want... think I understand that question. So yeah. Hitesh, the channels that you want to embrace are these, right? Number one, uh, you definitely want to do Google ads. You want to do Facebook, Instagram ads for lead generation. And there's something called as native advertising. You want to do native advertising also depending upon what size of your apartment is and what kind of budgets you are and what kind of risk appetite you have, the cost per lead from LinkedIn can be quite high. Uh, I would attempt that if the, uh, it is setting. But I would uh, start with these three, four channels, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google Ads, and uh, native advertising. Native advertising platforms like Rev Content, uh, Tabula. Uh, you have Columbia Internet from um, the Times Internet Group. So, yeah, so those are the things that I would do first before I try anything else. Okay. Zanin, if you would, would like to add something to that? Yeah, I think if you're not already in the digital space, as Fahim said, dive first in. Um, you're already late to the game with the other real estate uh, companies um, because they have already been doing it. And that's another thing is with the digital marketing, you will also be exposing your market to expats that are wanting to be coming back to India um, and also creating the market to move outside of India and be able to generate leads at a cheaper cost than the print. Okay. So I think Hitesh, your questions were answered. Uh, we have a question from Rahul. Uh, with companies shifting uh, to being digital, one of the most vital part of uh, that would be protecting privacy. What can be other aspects that need to be addressed while shifting uh, to digital marketing? So uh, that is the issue just now. So when we, uh, just to add my sense there, uh, when we tried to do uh, the meeting on Zoom, a lot of people were not agreeing to come on Zoom because of the thing which, are, uh, which is happening. So that's why we moved to AirMeet at the first. And then uh, we were using AirMeet for the first two days and then people were not able to hear us, the uh, people who were there. Then again, we shifted back to Zoom. So uh, 
I think that is the issue currently with technology. Some uh, some technologies are not scalable and some are. So whoever would like to uh, have a word on that, maybe Rajiv, I can start. Me? Yeah, sorry, you will right. start. Uh, I guess the first thing is customer service. Um, you want to make sure that you are servicing the customers and that if there are issues, you own up to them and you correct them as quickly as possible. Um, because like, for example, um, in the US when they had security breaches with people's social security numbers getting sent out, covering it up for months at a time and then going back and saying, oh, we've had this breach for the past three months is not appropriate. It needs to be addressed immediately so that people are made aware and that they can also take control of the situation and change their usernames, change their passwords, so that way it also doesn't roll over and affect everything else of theirs. Um, so customer service, number one, um, communication with the customers as well as engagement. So depending on what type of marketing you're going to be choosing, make sure that the engagement is there and that you're actually getting your customers to engage back with you and the feedback that they give you, make sure you take that feedback and you actually integrate it into your next strategy. So that way the customers are being heard. Okay. Rajiv, will you like to add something? I think she has banged on. Yeah. She's perfectly bingo. The only part is that, you know, there is no monopoly business. You know, there are, there are N number of other channels available. If you want to tap into your customer base, tap it to right. And if you are not, if you are putting any loose end, they'll, they'll go off to another, another channel. There, there, there are a lot, many other competition is already there. Yeah. So the, uh, she said the right thing about change, which is happening and uh, answering the thing, customer service and those things. So uh, there was a specific question for Rajiv. Uh, because uh, how has radio evolved with the digital thing? Because Spotify has come in, podcasts are coming in. And people are starting their own channels and own things. Because if you see, uh, there are a lot of influencers also who have become influencers because of the podcast that they are doing. There are people who left radio and are doing podcasts or are doing something of that sort. Plus also, uh, while we get clients on board in radio. So there are changes in the way uh, the things are not just for ads or the radio seconds. We also deliver something else. So how has that evolved in the last uh, quite some time that you have been seeing? So in the journey that you have been? It's a, it's a big shift which has happened because of this new medium has chipped in. So if we, if we go back 10 years back before, at the time, RJs were just an imaginary voice. There was no face to it. Then it comes to an on-ground section. The activation part came into the picture where RJs and entire team started doing on-ground their shows. So that was another phase. Before that, digital really seriously get into the picture. And afterwards, since past five, seven years, digital is getting so high. So it's not just any company. You, if you talk about Times of India, which is a print medium, if you talk about radio, if you talk about Aaj Tak, uh, a, a news channel, every, everybody is having their own on-ground section. They have their own, their, their core product and they have their digital leg also there. So. Any client who is coming, they sh should be getting all 360 degree solutions from the within one company on itself. That's a, that's a real game, you know. So nobody wants to take collaboration of another company. Ke digital ke liye isko le lete hai and uh, on ground ke liye isko lete hai radio aap mere se le lo. No, nobody is going to have that. So they have to have their presence in every vertical. And they will be pitching in as a collective bouquet package to the client. So you have to be strong in all the parts. And to, to do so, we are capitalizing. So far, if you talk about radio, we are capitalizing on our product and through which we are strengthening our digital part as well. So influencers who are becoming influencers because of their putting that thing on radio as a promotion. And afterwards, that digital presence, patch in more digital presence. So it's, it's, it's a good cycle. But this thing is definitely a serious thing for any company Forget about radio only. Any company, they have to have their all legs clear. They have to have their presence. Every every vertical have to have their their presence in every vertical, which is very essential in this day, this time. Okay. So uh, going to the next question that we have uh, after uh, it is from anonymous attendee. After lockdown, people will uh, go a lot uh, for shopping as they weren't able to. 
uh, won't companies be benefited uh, by that and they can increase price too okay so who would like to take that up i think uh, so uh, is a question person who's asking the question suggesting that uh, people have not shopped so now they will shop and it's okay to uh, and they will be willing to uh, pay for extra pay for yeah so uh, he is asking that uh, will that benefit uh, the companies in the first place because for the past two months or uh, so people are not shopping at all and then they will be going for shopping other thing is uh, will the companies increase the price there are the two points i i don't think so and i yeah i guess people will uh, shop but i think people are going to be very restrained in their shopping also uh, because jobs are at a threat i mean there are so many things that are at a thing right Having said that, some of the essentials which are already available will continue to be available, but I don't think the companies are going to increase their prices. Okay, Rajiv, I will like to add something. I totally agree to Fahim here. This is not nothing. Nothing of that sort is going to happen. Okay. So another thing is, can you suggest any traditional way of marketing that that goes hand in hand with digital marketing and gives profit to the people? Uh, it's a very open-ended question, but. Uh, again it is anonymous i think they uh, they, uh, they, uh, they have to give uh, an example otherwise i, I don't think it's yeah. it becomes so, an answer yes so if uh, anybody is asking such open ended question uh, do attach a uh, industry or something that you would like us to discuss so suppose we had uh, the industry of real estate then we knew that it is for that uh, industry so that will be better uh, and we're not talking about the sensitive health issues or personal counseling. It's definitely not a midnight show. So why do people want to be anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please go ahead, Sari. Yeah. Uh, no, like the only other thing where I can think of is that way would benefit um, in order for them to integrate it so that it benefits the consumer is to do affiliate marketing. Um, so that way they have like affiliate codes and then the consumer benefits um, by sharing those. Sure. But yeah, if they can expand on the question, that would probably be best. Sure. Okay. Uh, then Prerna is having a question. Uh, what do you think can be an optimal uh, way to make traditional businesses feel comfortable in digital era? So, uh, because uh, suppose if we take example, uh, 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 thing there, as marketing advisors will be there, but there are multiple basic things uh, like let's say Zoom meeting. Agency is definitely not there to arrange Zoom meeting or teach how to shift to online payment. Okay. Uh, I think we are facing the same issue with our companies that we are consulting to. So what is happening is they are now, as we are a digital agency, then their digital things all, if they want to go digital also, then they are asking us. So for arranging zoom meetings and also for, uh, uh, uh try to find out a software collaboration software, bata do kaun sa hota hai, and those kind of things. So will Charles that, them. sorry, Charles them. <laughs> For your time. <laughs> Difficult in this situation to charge people. That is for sure. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what is your take on that? Because somebody in that uh, domain, uh, people will be asking other things also. And how will if uh, there are very less people who will be equipped with those kind of things? So, how will that change? Be supportive, but charge them. That's it. <laughs> okay. Never do something for free. Never. Okay, uh, let us take another question. We have Naman. Uh, sir, for an automobile niche-based company, how do you think uh, uh, we could best utilize this doc lockdown in building our own online community for maximum engagement? Any tips on tools or tools? Uh, what automotive uh, community? I mean, is it like, do they sell cars? What, what do they do? Uh, let me bring in Naman. Uh, I think he attends this session and he's very active. Yeah, Naman. You are allowed to talk. I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, Naman. Hello, I'm audible. Naman, you are audible. Just be a bit more loud. You guys are not audible to me. Uh, just press this thing. Unable to hear. Uh, hi, yes, yes, yes. Now you guys are audible. Yeah, yeah. so actually, the automobile industry that I'm working for is an uh, electric scooter uh, vehicle company. So it's a startup actually, but it has been there for another around a year and we have almost 67 products that are already there in the market but uh, this lockdown like because of the same reasons the ad budget and all has been cancelled and uh, it's the reason why we are not able to you know uh, expand our outreach um, inorganically I but i was suggesting them a way of doing this organically by email marketing and stuff so what are other the tools that we could probably look into 
Any suggestions from you? Okay. Webinars. <laughs> Do more webinars. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess a couple is, points is like, take for yeah. example, BMW, right? They basically integrated their whole showroom into a web space for people to be able to take virtual test drives. And for a startup, it might be a little bit different, but you could do like a similar concept and do like a video on YouTube because YouTube marketing is huge. As soon as like you start putting in your proper keywords and your SEO optimization and everything, as soon as people start seeing that, I would do like a how-to video, uh, um, basically a couple different videos about the scooter, someone pretending to ride it, the different optimizations that are there. Um, and basically use like the free tools that you have to be able to market this um, to kind of get that leg up until showrooms do open up and people are actually able to see it in uh, person. So number one, I'm assuming just to add to Zaneen, I mean, definitely the how to's, the videos, all of those things. Now, see, if you're looking to build a community and you're looking at organic methods, so on and so forth, you know, first is you need to make up your mind are you going to sustain that community for the next two, three years, right? Yes, There's no point just because uh, everybody has the time to do webinars. I was actually kidding you when I said their webinars is that you don't want to be doing that, right? I mean, if it's going to be a short term knee jerk reaction to the time that you have. So it has right. to be whatever you're doing. And I think Zareen gave a great idea. You should be doing you know, YouTube, uh, build your SEO, write great content and put out really helpful videos for people and Instagram. Uh, engagement is fantastic if you're not uh, embracing uh, Instagram, young population, electric scooters. So yeah, I, I think it all will add up, but I think it should be based on the strategy that you have, which is long term. Right, right. Uh, so if, if, this, uh, if I'm allowed, can I ask a follow-up question, which is not related to this? Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so now the second question was, now with the new merger that is formed between Geo and uh, uh, the what uh, Facebook, so that is targeting the uh, local Kirana stores and all those uh, smaller 95 percent of the chunk of the market that is actually not digitalized. It still works on a traditional mode. So now, uh, obviously, with them coming on Geo Mart or anything of that sort, they will also be requiring services to uh, you know market their products or market their stores in the in the digital sense, and they'll be uh, relatively unequipped to do all this stuff. So how do you think digital agencies can leverage that and probably, you know, um, look at that as a marketing opportunity? See, I, I don't know if there is any scope for digital agencies there because it also depends, you know, uh, how much are you willing to charge uh, those people, right? Uh, some of them might not be able to afford your services. Yeah. So even though you might be able to offer a whole lot of services. So one thing that I would think it might be a great startup idea is if all this is happening, uh, one of the things that can be uh, done is build a very simple mobile platform, marketing platform, and enable the Kirana stores to take pictures and uh, put it up themselves, right? I mean, send, it, send out a blast to 100 people, uh, their customers, so on and so forth. So I don't know if there is a whole lot of scope for uh, you know, marketing for Kirana stores, unless if they are like a four uh, store chain, five store, 10 stores kind of chain. But if you mean the Nukkar Kirana kind of a thing, that might not be uh, be a great uh, opportunity in my opinion. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Great. Okay. So, uh, I think Naman, your question is answered. Uh, we have another anonymous question. Uh, is it difficult to gain trust of customers uh, through digital sources than traditional ones? Okay. Yeah, that's a hard time getting the trust of the person who's asking the question. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Rajiv, will you be able to uh, take that up? Hello. I, I lost that question. If you can, can you repeat it for me? Yeah. Please? So is it? It is. Yeah. Am I audible now? I think there are some network issues as well. But to repeat the question for us also. Can I, you I, come I, again? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, is it difficult to gain trust of customers through digital sources than the traditional ones? Uh, let me extend my point in the same because whenever something comes in paper, we know that. It has gone through a lot of uh, iterations or uh, it is the final one or if a radio ad is there it is refined enough but when we see a facebook ad then i as a person can also spend 500 rupees and do that ad. 
so what is the authenticity of that thing we see that same thing when news uh, news are coming uh, people uh, n- uh, proper news sources like ani and those are all have to also do a repeated tweet after that okay the uh, tweet before that was wrong and this is the right thing that we are now telling you those kind of things so what is the authenticity of the news so i have what is called as the dad test right so the dad test is my dad will come show his phone and say see what i saw on whatsapp and my response to that is i will uh, read that news when it is in the newspapers not on whatsapp so i think more and more because of the amount of fake news that is there on digital mediums um, i mean obviously i'm not comparing this to digital advertising to fake news uh, there is a sense of um, you know assume to trust people have in newspaper uh, newspapers and tv news and so on and so forth so Uh, definitely, uh, if you're building a brand, I would definitely recommend a 360 degree approach: radio, newsprint, and if you can afford afford TVC, and combine it with the digital. But digital should be the vehicle uh, for the long term. Once you establish that credibility quickly. Rajiv, are you able to hear us? I think he is having some issues. Okay. so uh, i think the anonymous attendee would have got his answer uh, again why are people asking you can uh, see everybody you can change your name uh, there is no issue in asking questions anonymously uh, according to you we which... are all your co- competitors trying to get ideas <laughs> and go implement it <laughs> <laughs> so according to you which industries will require to allocate more fund to their marketing budgets post the pandemic Okay, that's an interesting question. Uh, Sir, the next question, please don't take on any anonymous questions. I sure, sure, sure. Uh, it's an interesting question. According to you, which industries would require to allocate more funds uh, to their marketing budgets post the pandemic? Zareen or uh, Zareen, will you like to? Add? I think it depends on the company and the industry. I don't think we can really say what they need to do. I think depend if they can identify. what the industry is and what they currently have their marketing budget allocated to then we can give more of a detailed answer but i think we need more information um to be able to address it okay. uh, 100% agree with uh, jerry okay so suppose if we take example of uh, the restaurant industry food and beverages industry restaurants bars and other people so they will be facing a very tough time in the coming days because we uh, run a community called hungrito which is into food discovery and uh, we have a lot of clients and uh, they are now saying they won't be open opening their stores because for next 6 months there is a belief in people that uh, they will have to check the hygiene mm-hmm. uh, the social distancing rule things like that so what do you uh, feel that uh, will they uh, will there be a need for them to do a lot of marketing to bring people back to the uh, restaurants or cafes uh, will there be a case or then uh, people will be flocking their as regular it was i don't know sorry go ahead sorry um i don't know if they'll need to do additional marketing i guess it depends on with the trust and the belief that they had in the customers before the quarantine happened right because if they had already established that trust base with their customers saying that we're a hygienic restaurant then post quarantine i think the the trust should still already be there based off of what their previous experiences were if it was a unhygienic restaurant to start with i don't think there's going to be any difference later on and yes they'll probably need to work on their marketing but i think once people have already established like a sense of trust because i know even with people like in pune and some of the other cities they're going off of their previous experiences and saying okay even during quarantine we're still accepting deliveries from these places because we know their quality we know what they stand behind and we know that they're going to be making sure that they're providing people with safe food okay anyway uh, i i quite agree with uh, zareen uh, except that uh, unfortunately in india even some of the biggest uh, uh, restaurant chains have a, a challenge when it comes to hygiene uh, i think we all saw a picture on uh, whatsapp or somewhere uh, i think it was in the newspapers about a uh, lack of social distancing when people were picking up uh, food from a uh, dominos restaurant right in yeah. the big pizzas right so there's absolutely no social distancing so having said that restaurants will have to invest a little bit whatever they have 
and uh, definitely digital. The reason is you can uh, pretty much raise a target in a two kilometer, three kilometer radius and show ads. So definitely digital, definitely a li little bit of budget. But I'm very concerned by the news that was put out about a week back by I think National Restaurants uh, Federation yeah. uh, Association that said 40% of the restaurants can shut down. Yeah. And the ones that survive uh, will definitely will focus on hygiene. I'm sure they're thinking about uh, how to communicate about uh, hygiene. Okay. Uh, I I totally, will, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree with Fahim here when saying that in, in a foreign perspective, that definitely the safety will be a big issue. That people are going to see if the safety measures are there or not. But in India, if you talk about uh, Hungary, it must be uh, in, in agreement with me on this that most of the food joints they are street food vendors, you know. So the hygiene levels are not not that much being being taken care of, and customers who are who are who are consuming that food. They are already having that mindset that they are not going to say the best example is the Pani Puri or a Gold Rappa. Everyone knows that that is most unhygienic. Still, you will see every Saturdays and Sundays, people are queuing up there. Every small thalawala is having that queue there. So that, that safety measures will not be a concern here for the street food vendor, which is a big market in, in India per se. But the restaurant owners definitely they have to change their dynamics today. Only in a, in a one newspaper I was I was reading that they are going to change their entire menu. They are going to have sanitization before entering into a restaurant. So the the, the fork and spoons will not be placed before clients I mean, the customers are sitting on the on the on the chair. So on the table. So there are many things they are already thinking of it. They are putting a digital menu. There, there won't be a, a same menu which is going around the tables all the time. So there are many changes there. Restaurant owners are taking it up. But the equal bigger chunk is the street food vendors where things are not the same. You know, the hygiene levels and all things are... In India, it will be a... I think uh, uh, there are two perspectives. One, outside India and in, inside India with the food, food, food vendors. Okay. Uh... So we have, I think, 15 minutes, right? So, yeah, sure. No, no, I just want to keep you posted. Yeah, if yeah. you want to take on more questions, or I think you also had some more questions. Yeah. So uh, I had a follow-up question of uh, street food vendors only, but I think Rajiv yeah. summed it up uh, really well. So because I am an avid Pani Puri eater, so I had a concern, what will happen to my Pani Puri guy after this? So will he be there after lockdown <laughs> with us or not? Because I think government will also be taking a lot of steps, but uh, Rajiv Bhai answered it really well. So th that will be a concern and let us see how uh, things change for them. Even because adapt. I think uh, it's going to be more important for the Pani Puri uh, Wala to survive uh, for his living yeah. than uh, you know, anybody else. So they will definitely adapt and I'm, I'm sure that the corporations and all that, they will ensure uh, that. Anyway, I think we kind of digress from <laughs> the food is a very uh, basic thing, so that's why we can talk about it a lot. <laughs> okay, so I Ajay is having... about it now because I'm fasting for Ramadan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just kidding you guys. No, no, I'm just kidding you. I'm fasting throughout the year, so I do a one meal a day diet. I'm like fasting, like most of the year. So that's okay. all right. Cool. So uh, Ajay has, has a question. Uh, since lockdown has com uh, compelled people to consume a lot of digital content. Uh, will there be a digital fatigue or will people restrain from tech? Uh, whoever wants to take that. I will be announcing my show very soon. Follow me on Instagram, right? Uh, the show is about this, right? Um, and, and one of the things I was talking to the psychologist and she was telling me that this is a real thing. The amount of content people are consuming, which they don't really need. So uh, guys, I mean, Webinars are not like, uh, you know, you can't binge on webinars like Netflix. So, uh, Sahil, I hope you're pretty much at the end of your uh, webinar, yeah, yeah. webinar series or whatever it is, right? Yeah, I think next, part, next webinar, you'll have less participants. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, actually the thing is, uh, I am uh, surprised that in the afternoon session, uh, so this is a key learning for us also. This is the first afternoon session that we are having. And I think uh, from the whole series, this is the uh, smallest participant group that we had. It is not about the panel, but I think people have now got a habit of sleeping in the afternoon. 
because i my teammate four of them are not there in the webinar <laughs> so they have slept i don't know what is this so i think there are a lot of shifts in the pattern that we are seeing uh, so after lunch a lot of people are now taking a afternoon nap because they are at home then they again start so there was uh, this was a very norm, uh, normal thing if we say in rajkot and saurashtra region uh, in gujarat where we come from uh, in the afternoon they take a nap at from uh, 2 to 4 they start the factory at i think 8 in the morning 8 to 1 they will be working 1 o'clock they have lunch break 1 to 2 they have lunch then they sleep and they again 4 o'clock they start they work till 7 and then they the day is over and those kind of things so i think we might see those trends also in the it offices once the work from home thing starts <laughs> but that that's also where you've been seeing like a shift in the way media has been consumed is because people are getting up later so instead of yeah. like the 7 8 category of people consuming media it's now 11 to 12 or 12 to 1 and then again they're sh- um uh, shifting again instead of it being at night time they're going back to like 4 to 5 so that's where when you are targeting your digital media you have to be aware of the prime time spots have changed because of the quarantine and because of the different situation so that's kind of where you do want to target different things very good not not only not only this uh, prime time has been changed the audience has also been changed mm-hmm. you know earlier we used to have in radio we used to say that the morning drive times having a male population up and you know participant in the mid morning time which is 11 to 2 the males are working busy and female audience get gets into action and we get more participants from female audience in the afternoon is more of a youth evening again the uh, working males are back and in the late night we are having a easy listen, listening but again a male audience which is active this entire shift has been changed believe me because everyone is at home they have the different pattern the day parts are, are yeah. changed so their consum- consumption pattern is also been changed along with the depart uh, timing very true i think uh, that has a lot to do with sometimes what we feel, uh, felt is the, there was a session in the first session that we did it was from 6 to 7:30 and then people were like no no 7 o'clock it is the show time so <laughs> we will have to shift back okay so then there are priorities which people are uh, having so sometimes uh, with ott platform i think that won't be there but uh, things are uh, changing a lot in the this times according to the content then they consume okay so uh, we will take this last question and then maybe we will end the session uh, which are, uh, are you able to see there are two, two questions can we take two oh, yeah okay. sure so yeah. kaushal is asking uh, how can non essential goods deal with this pandemic as well as post pandemic uh, uh, can it be a little bit more specific yeah kaushal uh, are you there we will bring him yeah kushal is kushal sorry yeah kushal you can unmute yourself and ask the question hello mm-hmm. yeah kushal you are audible yeah i mean any non essential goods take t-shirts or shoes or watches which are not that essential to people but still they have to sustain their businesses right yeah so how will what will be change in the marketing strategies or how will they uh, deal with this pandemic as well as post i think watch uh, issues any issues so the non essential i mean the word itself is non essential essentials right so people are going to uh, be slower in in terms of uh, consuming non essentials uh, i mean their buying habit is definitely i feel is going to come down and i think almost everybody is going to downgrade their lives right from very large agencies they might they might come to medium agencies from small agencies they'll go into free to go to freelancers likewise from uh, a mercedes they might downgrade to bmw so on and so forth uh so yeah uh i i i really think uh, you know uh my bet is going to be radio and digital i think these two channels can really help the non essential uh thing uh but so here here is a unique uh, example this is a little away from the question if i can just uh, take a minute right so yesterday i got a call from somebody and he's been following me and my interviews and all of those things so he's very very keen to sign us up and here is a unique problem that he has he's got a store where uh, they have a 1 km line for people to get into the store a husband and wife cannot get into the store because it is so crowded and it's a men's store uh, so that's how crowded they are 
And the reason why they're talking to us is they want to start selling online now because of the social distancing problem. So this is a company which has a completely different problem. But to answer your question, right, this is an extremely, their target customers are extremely price sensitive, but it's also value fashion. I mean, it's so ridiculous that they sell uh, t-shirts for 99 rupees. Sometimes they give an offer for 50 rupees, right? So, so much so that people on their social media say, hey, this is fake news. Don't believe these guys, uh, kind of a thing. So, uh, I think value, uh, uh, when your marketing value is going to be a lot easier than trying to sell uh, luxury products is, is my opinion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Kaushal. Uh, I will say, Prena has a question. We will take that one. And uh, okay, so, uh, so uh, Swastik has a good question. What is your opinion about this period compared to 2008 recession? Because most of you were active at that time. Uh, we, uh, most of our generation was into schools or colleges, but what you were there, you have seen the trend. So uh, uh, in the recession in businesses, uh, what shift does business need to uh, do to make profits? So the extended question is, uh, 2008 recession was there. Uh, you all have seen that. And uh, what are the shifts that uh, businesses need to do to make profits in today's scenario? What you have seen? Budgeting um, is going to be the main thing in order for them to thrive. As well as 2008, you saw a lot of industries, um, you saw a lot of partnerships come out of that. So a lot of companies merged, migrated, joint ventures happened, uh, technology combined. So from that, that's kind of where you saw a lot of new partnerships coming out where there was a lot more collaboration that was happening. And I think that's kind of where in order for some of these smaller um, businesses to be able to sustain themselves, they'll either have to be bought out, merged or combined, or they're going to have to basically reinvent themselves to come up with new revenue streams uh, for them to survive. So I think that's probably where 2008 and now is going to be similar, but also it's very different aspects where 2008 in the automotive industry, yes, there was a lot of help that came from the governments, but abroad right now, the governments are helping their citizens in a lot of different ways with finances, with unemployment, finding jobs, allowing, putting in different allowances. We're still yet to kind of see what India will do, but um, let's kind of see how it plays out. But that's kind of where a lot of the governments are putting their money back into their people and giving them these assurances and saying that we will be growing. Okay. So some, the person who asked the question was about profits, right? I yeah. think most yeah. companies like Zareen alluded to is the fact that they will try to survive now, uh, right? I mean, that's a general statement. But I think this is I think many economists have already said that this is by far one of the biggest. Yesterday I was listening to something, uh, uh, a columnist from Financial Times on TV, and uh, they were saying that this could be as big as the Great Depression itself, right? So definitely bigger than 2008. And yeah. please remember, uh, even though 2008 is like a popular thing uh, worldwide, it did not affect India so much. Like yeah. it affected the rest, of the rest of the world, right? So we were a fairly resilient economy. Unfortunately, we had a challenge with the economy in terms of uh, consumption. And now it has just been exasperated because of this whole COVID situation. So it's going to be definitely a challenge. I don't think anybody's got easy answers for this. Okay. Raja, will you like to add? Yeah, but at the time, the, 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 the dynamics were completely different. And as Fahim has rightly said that, you know, it had not affected India that much. But this time, India has also been affected. You know, every the, the, we have never seen this kind of situation where people are locked down for 40, 40 days, you know, and still there is no ray of hope. We are, we are running in a dark tunnel. So you never know what kind of replications this market is going to give when it is up and running again. So that's one thing which nobody can predict. For one. Second, I'm talking about the market dynamics, as Zareen has rightly said, that collaboration, everything had happened. And at that time, that the digital space was not that strong in 2008 and 9. Right now it is strong. Right now we have influencers and freelancers and we have individual brands as well along with corporates. So there are, there are many collaborations within the uh, influencer space is going to be happening. So 
if you if you look at if you open up an instagram right now and you see many collaborative lives are going on and on and on so there are there is a there is a there is a race of getting your community bigger with the help of another community builder so this kind of dynamics is going to make a big difference so there's lot we can not predict right now to be very honest 